So, over the past few years, there's been a noticeable decline in the quality of Pokemon games. Not to say that the recent games have been bad necessarily, they just, you know, haven't really exceeded my expectations. Like, at all. But the dawn of a new age is upon us. Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl are coming later this year, along with Legends Arceus the year following. Let me first start with BDSP. I'll be completely honest, when I first saw the game, I was shocked, scared, and disappointed all at the same time. It wasn't what I expected, like, at all. Experience the brilliance once more. What? No! What the fuck is this? What the fuck is this? What the fuck is this? They see me! No! No! Please don't tell me this is let's go! Please! 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 Why does it look like this, man? How do you fuck it up? How do you fuck it up? They look like the old Sim thing! You know that, like that Sims game on the Wii? This looks weird! I don't like it! Looks like my Sim! The graphics at the time looked downright terrible, and I wasn't really vibing with the cheapies yet. I had essentially lost hope right then and there. Some of you may be saying, The game was nowhere near being complete, of course the graphics look bad, but allow me to explain. Games always have a gameplay footage not final disclaimer in their trailers. Usually game companies try to improve the graphics as much as possible before release, but not Game Freak. The same exact thing happened with Sword and Shield. The gameplay footage not final, disclaimer was there, people held on to hope, and were unfortunately let down. I expected that pattern to continue, but I was completely wrong. It started with the Switch OLED trailer showing off BDSP gameplay, and it was noticeably more polished. I didn't put much thought into it though. I just thought, well, that's what the final game's gonna look like. So, although my expectations were still pretty low, I was at the very least a little glad some improvements were made. But those very same expectations were blown away when the latest Pokemon Direct hit. The graphical improvements made to the game were night and day better, but that's not all. None of the features are getting cut. It's sad to say that that's mind-blowing, but it's gotten to that point. There's also character customization now, which has never happened in a remake before. The models, the animation, the scenery, the lighting, it all looks so incredible. And although we haven't heard much of the soundtrack yet, I already know it's going to be a certified hood classic. I actually kind of like the chibis now. They look really charming, and the fan favorite feature of Pokemon following you is returning. One thing that kind of looks weird to me though is that in the overworld, you're a chibi, but your Pokemon aren't. So there's just this really strange contrast of an extremely detailed Pokemon and a small chibi trainer. Ball capsules make a return too, and I feel like that feature is severely underrated. I don't know why, but I always just kind of liked it. Super contests are back, and that's cool, I guess. I'm not really a huge fan of Pokemon contest, but if I want to shake things up a little, I'll participate in it, I guess. The thing that has me the most excited is the underground. I can't tell you how many hours I've spent down there. Seeing it return is just one huge blast of nostalgia, and with the addition of the underground, means secret bases are back. I'm gonna have the absolute drippiest secret base in all of existence. Pokemon hideaways are brand new additions, and they look beautiful. They change depending on what statues you have in your secret base, and I'm calling it right now, this is the new shining hunting method. Also, I just want to say it's kind of funny that they're still treating Cynthia's identity as a spoiler, like literally everyone their dog knows who this woman is. Anyways, back to the topic at hand, I understand that these games are not being developed by Game Freak, but it's still a step in the right direction for Pokemon as a whole. And besides, Game Freak is also being extremely innovative with their own project, and I adore it. Instead of making the cookie cutter Diamond and Pearl remakes we were expecting, or just moving on to Generation 9, they're doing something they've never done before in the 25 years they've been around. They're changing the Pokemon formula entirely. They're not even making two different versions this time around. When Legends Arceus was first revealed, it was love at first sight. I'm extremely hyped about this new open world action RPG take on the Pokemon series. People started noticing, however, that the frame rate was pretty horrible when it was first revealed, and I haven't noticed any frame rate issues in the latest trailer, however, so maybe they fixed it, or maybe I'm just blind. Right before the latest trailer begins, it states that this game takes place when the lives of Pokemon and humans were still separate. A book in Pokemon Diamond and Pearl states that there was a time when humans and Pokemon were basically the same. They ate at the same table, and they could even get married. So, Legends Arceus takes place even before that. That means we won't be seeing any Pokemon X human relationships. Thank God! Pokemon will actually go out of their way to hurt you now, which is really cool. That sounds a bit weird, but it's the truth. We basically have never had a Pokemon directly attack a human. It's always been done through dialogue, off screen, or a really terrible animation. But Game Freak pulled back zero punches this time around. They just straight up attack you. 
There's also these boss battles where a really aggressive Pokemon is constantly trying to attack you and you either have to catch it or defeat it. It looks really fun, but I have a strong feeling Arceus is the cause of these aggravated Pokemon. The villain of this game might be God, and that sounds really cool. It's Pokegami Tensei. The new battle system is really interesting as well. When you choose a move, it gives you two options. You can choose power for, well, more power, but you get to move less that turn. Or you can choose agile, which allows you to move more during your turn, but it isn't as strong as power. By the way, if you're wondering why I'm essentially regurgitating all this information you most likely already know, it's because I often get comments saying that they're confused and I should explain more. And yes, I do read every single comment. Anyways, moving on to the graphics. This game looks so damn good. The Pokemon actually have better animations than what we've seen in previous titles, and the lighting and character models look stunning. It looks like Game Freak is actually trying for once. Seeing this has kind of revitalized my excitement and love for Pokemon, so if these games end up being terrible, that'll absolutely crush me along with my spirit. I doubt it'll be terrible though, so there's no need to worry about that. If this game becomes one of the Switch's best-selling games, then hopefully Game Freak will continue to put more effort into their games. I understand Pokemon Sword and Shield sold extremely well, but maybe, just maybe, Game Freak has learned from their mistakes. Or what if I was right all along? What if Game Freak was lowballing Sword and Shield on purpose to make their improvements for their future games more noticeable? Eh, who knows, but the point still stands, these games look incredible, and I'm glad my expectations have been blown away. I'll continue making some more Legend Arceus and BDSP videos because there's still so much I want to talk about. Leave a comment, like, and subscribe, and follow my socials. Let's all hope for the best, and maybe this is the start of a bright future for Pokemon.